Shalom, shalom, Joshua Allah. We're going to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Raha Kadash. Went to the Paleo Hebrew tongues, great names of the Holy Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And shalom to you, sister, brothers, living is true. And shalom to the brothers and sisters listening and studying to show themselves approved. Shalom. Come and talk to you today, Yahshua, about a dream I had. And I believe it was a dream about Jacob's trouble. So this is going to be a quick little testimony. And I'm going to relay everything I had in my dream. Because it seems so real. It seemed very real, Yasharala. So I'm going to relay it to you. And basically what I, I believe it covers is Jacob's trouble. You know, so I'm going to start off with saying how, how the first thing, how it happened. I remember like it went down. The first thing that had happened that I knew it wasn't going to be a normal day was that they a missile had been launched, Joshua, a missile had been launched, and they thought it was an ICBM missile. They thought it was an intercontinental ballistic missile. Everybody's getting ready for a nuclear attack, but it wasn't a nuclear attack. When the missile went off, it, it blew up before it made contact with Babylon the Great, and you could see it. I remember going outside, they were talking about it, and everybody's like, you know, everybody's panicking, like, all oh, the country's about to get hit with a nuclear strike. So I remember everybody, we, it, it, the missile went off. Everybody went outside. And when the missile went off, it made like a gray cloud. The missile went off in the air, and it blew up, and it made a big, giant, gray, like, silverish cloud. And when it went off, all the cars sizzled, the TVs went out, all the phones went out, people were just stuck on the highways, everything just went completely black when that missile went off. And I remember vividly hearing it because I was looking outside and I was looking at it. And I was calling on you, I was shy, you know, hoping the chair to come get me. And I'm looking at it when it blew, went off. You know, I was outside and I could hear all the cars and everything sizzling and crackling and popping. It sounded like a, like a sizzle, you know? And I remember like somebody's car was like right in front of my house when it happened. And I heard that car sizzling and stopped. I could hear my cars in the driveway, they were sizzling and everything just went out. And after that, it was like a lot of panic. You know, I was like, go back in the house. I was like, there was an EMP strike. Like, you know, us in this truth, we kind of know, especially military brothers, we kind of know, uh, you know, a little something about what's going, what's going on. I was like, there was an EMP strike. And I was like, ah, here it go. They done, they done lit off an EMP strike. Things about to get real tested. I'm telling my, my wife that we went back in the house. I was like, it's about to get real. You know, so it was no TV, no phones, everything blacked out. So a couple of days went by. Esau is, is, I guess that was, I want to say the National Guard or the military, one, one of the two. They were uh, going down the street. They was in Humvees. And they were like going house to house. You know, people was running out to them like some fools. I already knew the deal. Us in this truth, so we got to be thankful for Yah Bashasha giving us this advance warning. I already knew what they was about to do. That's it. Us in this truth, we already know what the deal is. So I goes in the house. Esau going down, they try to act like they're doing good, but what I noticed they was doing was they was going house to house and they were raiding people's houses and taking their food and their water. And it's like, they had keys, Yasharala. Like, they, what they would do, they would get out in their Humvees, they would surround the house. Because I watched them do a, a, a house like that. I'm, I'm in my neighborhood, I'm watching. Watching what they're doing. They surround the house. You know, they had troops in the back, troops in the front, and they had keys. They would open the door up, go in there, and they was making everybody, you know, get on the ground. And they were taking everybody food and supplies because they also did that to my house as well. I remember they came up in our house in the dream. I don't know why. I didn't I didn't attack them. I didn't do nothing. But they made everybody get down on the ground, you know, me, the children, you know, my wife, get down on the ground. And they were running through our house, you know, rummaging like, I'm like a drug raid. And they took, you know, the visible food, the water that we had. You know, we got stuff stashed, so they just took what we had visible, and they went they went on their way, and they just went down the block. They was just taking everybody's food. Um, certain children, I don't know why, but they was taking certain children. They would take certain people's children. I remember Eve was crying. They took her child, you know, but they didn't take my children. But I know they were taking certain children. I don't know what the criteria was for that, but certain people they were taking. Um, people were trying to fight back. They would just gun them down. You know, I was hearing about how they, you know, I was in the neighborhood, they're like, oh, they killed whoop-de-whoop, -whoop. you know, they all talking about it. And um, 
it, it was just it was a chaotic time. So I'm gonna go get this. Let's start off with this. I'm gonna go get this because this is what it was. It was Jacob's trouble, pretty much. It had just kicked off, and my dream was like showing like how it will start. So I'm gonna get this precept, and this is a uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7. At last, for that date is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Keep in mind, it said, but he should be saved out of it. So people, I, I relay this, y'all, Sharala. So check it out. They're going door to door. And at this point, they're just taking everybody's goods. They're just taking your food, your water, whatever you got. And I noticed what they was trying to set up, what they did. Because like at this time, nobody's going to work. Nobody's going to no work because it's straight chaotic. At night, all you hear is gunshots and people hollering at night. There's no, no power, no electric. Like we got a bunch of candles. I remember lighting up candles in the house. Uh, the water wasn't working, but I had bought things, you know, and uh, I got tubs. So we, my family, we had plenty of water. You know, we had water. We had food. We would light the candles and we would all stay in one room because the children were very scared. You know, everybody, they were scared. You know, my wife was scared. Everybody was scared. You know, so we all stay in one room. And I remember at night you would hear a bunch of gunshots and killing and you could just hear a bunch of hollering. And it was just chaos, especially at night. So nobody was going to work. Wasn't no go to work, wasn't nothing, man. Only thing that was like, you only only safety you had was to stay in your house and stay in the doors. I remember one time I tried to get out my house and, and try to like go down the block, see what was going on or whatnot. And I was seeing murders. You know, I was seeing people get, you know, messed up. Uh, military troops was running down the block. And I remember like, I'm like, man, going down three blocks, man, get you killed. So I didn't too much venture too much out of the house. I went out to try to test the waters. I seen a bunch of killing, a bunch of people kicking in people's doors, and I didn't want to leave my family out there like that. So I went back home, and I was just like, you know, telling my wife, like, you know, we got to make do with what we got because uh, I, I could lose my life going out here, you know, and then what y'all going to do? Who's going to protect y'all? So I pretty much only went out a little bit, and I came back to the house because it was a whole lot going on, a whole lot of killing, a whole lot of people invading one another, which is going to lead me to my next priest I'm going to go get because that was happening a lot. You know, it was happening a whole lot. So I'm going to go to Second Edris 15. A whole lot of chapter 15 was happening. So check it out. It's, this is uh, Second Edris 15 and 15. But the sword and the destruction draw nigh, and one people should stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there should be sedition among men, and invading one another. They should not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And a man should desire to go into a city and shall not be able. But I couldn't even go down the block, y'all, Sharala. Like, I was afraid to even go three blocks down my neighborhood because there was so much killing and so much shooting and chaos going on. I didn't want to leave my, my people hanging like that. I didn't want to leave my family like that because it was that much. So I know if it was that bad, you sure ain't making it to one city to another, man. I'm telling you, we had the military probably checked off, but in my dream, I didn't go that far. I only went a couple blocks. And I went back into the house. And there was definitely sedition. Like, people were trying to fight the military. The military was shooting people back. Um, they was invading people's houses. People were invading people's houses. I'm going to get to this point, too, in the dream. In the dream, at one point, it was a night we was in there. There was probably, like, 20 Mexicans, Northern Tribe, you know, essays. They were trying to break into the house because they didn't have any water and no food. And they only spoke Spanish. I was trying to tell them we ain't got nothing. We don't have nothing for you. Don't come in here. And they had machetes in their hands. And they were trying to break into the house. And I remember I had to, I had to go get the sword. And I had to, you know, I had to lay them out. You know, they, they, they were just trying to, like, they was uh, busting out the windows. They, they were scared. The children was hollering. Why was Everybody was hollering. So I just get, I, I got to that point where they was trying to get in the house. I had to get the sword and do what I had to do. So I had to lay them out. And I remember laying them out, man. It had to be the Spirit of the Lord because I'm not a, a good shot. I'm not really good with Esau's sword, but in that dream, man, I laid him out with precision. And I remember laying him out, and me and uh, the oldest boy, we, we drugged their bodies to the street. And I remember Esau, like like a, a, a trash service, Esau coming through the military, they grabbed the bodies up in the Humvees, and they rolled out. You know, I guess they, and I, they, that's when it hit me, too. Esau wanted the chaos. Esau wants to bring the chaos. He wants the civilians to attack each other. I, I get in my dream, that's what was going on. And it's probably how they're going to do it in real life. But I'm just letting you know how they did it in my dream. In my dream, when that situation happened, 
and I drug the dead bodies to the street because I didn't want them hanging around my house. And, and the military people came and picked up the bodies. I was like, I was telling my wife, like, they want us to kill ourselves. They want us to, they, this is what they want. So they're letting us, you know, yap each other up. And uh, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read uh, 18 and 19 since I, you know, said that. So this is uh, 2nd Edges 15 and 18. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled and houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. And here go 19. A man should have no pity upon his neighbor and he should destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So it backs up what I've seen in my dream. Those Mexicans or Northern Tribe Jakes, they were trying to break into my house because, I, you know, they, they didn't have no food or no water. They were trying to tell me, like, to, to give up what I had. I don't know if they, they figured I had it. And I, I had to, you know, I had to defend my house. I had to, you know, do what I needed to do. You know, and uh, and I remember in the dream, we drug their bodies to the streets. Like I said, I didn't want their dead bodies hanging around my house. And Esau came through the military and they picked the dead bodies up. So I was like, uh, they want us to destroy ourselves. They want us to kill each other up, you know. So check it out. The dream gets even deeper, Yashrala. So check it out. We're there in the house. And see how the scripture said, men shall be afraid. Man, family, I know men were afraid. But in the dream, I wasn't afraid like that. Because I knew the situation I knew what was going on. We've been versed on this. That's why it's a good thing to be in this truth. Because I noticed when repetition come, and we've been, like, listening on this, eating these lessons up. When the situation happens, we're not going to be afraid like that. Like, I'm, like, I'm going to go get this. I'm going to go get this. Because I was stable. I was not scared in this situation, y'all, at all. Like, my, my wife was scared. My children were afraid. I was not. And I noticed because I wasn't scared. It kept them cool when they got scared. It's like they was, like, looking to me to be that rock. And I was that rock, you know, all thanks to the power of your high I was shot. I'm going to go get this since I said that because I was not afraid. I was not afraid. And then, like, something happened. I'm going to get to in the story that, that further strengthened my faith and made me not be more, you know, I, I sure wasn't afraid at all. Something that happened and boosted my faith in this dream. So I'm going to hit this real quick. It's Isaiah 33 and 6. And it reads, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure and because of these precepts and listen to these lessons when this event was happening i was not afraid at all y'all sure it's like you know I, I was making it man i'll keep my wife cool she was panicking the children were scared and i'll keep them cool like man y'all but y'all got us man that's why i did all these lessons that's why i hit the highway and hedges we're gonna be all right you know and it really hit me too because like esau had rolled down on us and they they know nothing happened to us man they didn't take my my children we were still good so check this out, y'all, Sharala. And this is what really boosted my faith in the dream on this situation. Check this out. One of the elder brothers in the truth, one of the elder brothers, man, veteran, man, brother I listened to a whole lot. He was in my dream. Check it out, y'all, Sharala. So in my dream, you know, wasn't no working vehicles, nothing like that. So we're in the house. My wife is all like, man, our food getting low, our water getting low. What we going to do? We got to get more food. We got to get more water. I'm telling her, man, just have faith. Calm down, something happens. Check it out. One of the elder brothers in the truth shows up, rides down to the house. I don't know how he knew where I lived at. Uh, I don't know if he's ever been to Tulsa because he doesn't live in this state. He rides down on the house in a white, like a YMCA van. He was in, the, I'll, I'll never forget, he was in a white van. One of them big, like YMCA vans that, you know, uh, the maybes be having, the maybe centers, one of them, them like the YMCA vans, like I say. And it was white. And the ock rides down. And the ock got water and food in the van. So he rides down, you know, knocking the door. You know, I got the, the strap. I'm thinking, you know, it's Esau, the military. I look up, and it's ock. And I'm like, what? How ock know I'm here, you know? And he like, hey, ock, y'all need water. He had, he had water. He had food. And he had medicine. He was like, here, ock, I got this for you and your family, you know? This is for y'all right here, you know? And he, uh, you know, we got the water, got the food, medicine. And then, like, it boosted. I'm like... Ak, how you doing this? He's like, you know, and Ak was like himself, like he do his lessons. He was like, man, you know the Lord going to look out for us, man. You come on now. You know better, Ak. You know the Lord got us. You know what I'm saying? And he had like a, a van. <laughs> he had a working vehicle. Um, He had water. Like I said, food, medicine. And he dropped it off to us. And he was like, I got more runs to make. Ak, y'all good? You know, endure to the end. You know, we all shalom and kahalom. You know, each other. And he, you know, Ak and like. I was giving him hell in my dream. In my dream, 
like the military would see Ock in, in his van and they would ride down on him in their Humvees and Ock was like popping willies. And like he had some knots in that van or something. Man, he'll, man, he'll take off on Esau in the van. And I was just sitting there like watching like, wow, like, but like he came through a lot. Like when Esau like come through their little, little, little checks to come in the house, Ock would pop up in his van, bust a gun off, get their attention and then lead them on a chase and be laughing and just be, he was just giving Esau hell. It's like he would just pop up in his van and Esau would be looking for him. Cause I remember one point in my dream, Esau came to me like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, they was, they, they was rubbing their head and, and Ock would just pop up and then he would disappear in his van, pop up and they just couldn't, they couldn't get Ock. They couldn't get him, man. They, like, Ock was just giving him hell. And like in my dream, I think Ock was making like trips to hopefully let brothers houses and delivering, you know, water, food, and medicine, whatever we needed. And I would see Ock, like, like in my dream, like, every week he'll pop up with some daily supplies. You know, and then I'm in my dream, I was like, man, we good, man. Ock out here, I don't know how he got a working vehicle. I don't know where he getting his supplies from. I'm like, Ock out here giving Esau hell. They can't catch him. I'm like, he in a YMCA van, and they in some souped-up Humvees, but they could not catch Ock. He was popping the curve, you know, laughing. Like, he, he was giving, man, he's giving Esau fits, man, in my dream. And I remember that was boosting my faith, like, and I remember telling my wife, like, look, man, we, we good, man. I told you, I, man, I done did this. Why I didn't do this work for no reason. I told you, yeah, how about y'all got us? Look at Ock, man, he giving them hell, man. We good. So I remember that, like, they gave me a big faith booster during those troubled times. Like, when that when I seen Ock giving them hell like that and giving us supplies, like, it immediately hit me to my next priest I'm about to go to. And after that, it's like, I didn't have no fear at all. I was like, we good, man. I done did this truth. Like, we we for sure good, man. I got her delivering supplies. And it immediately popped this precept up in my head. You know? And then, like, I thought about the precept in my head when I had my dream. I was like, yep, this 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 precept right here. We good. We, we ain't got nothing to worry about. And this is Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. And that precept popped in my head as Ock was delivering water and food and, and supplies, you know, to my household. I was like, this is how Ock, you know, Yahabashah making a way. And he's using his men to do it. And I was just like, man, I remember they just boosted my face so, so much, man. I was called out Yahabashah. Like, I just knew me and my family was going to make it. You know, when, when that situation happened, when the show, I, and he would pop it up every week, we was good. You know, and I think through the spirit, he was delivering that to all the whole free leg, you know. And I'm like, because I was like, how did he get a working car? Like, you know, and I didn't question it. I was like, man, we good. Yabasha making a way. And this precept has been fulfilled. You know, we got water. We got food. We got this. We got candles. Like, you know, we got protection. We good. So I was like, man, this. I told her, quit wearing it. The most high gonna make a way. You see what he just did right here. Look, I got a, a truck, man. And I remember one time she was like, I wanted to they catch him. You know, she was kind of nervous about that. And then Ock popped up next week. And I was like, Ock, man, they, they couldn't catch you. He's like, man, come on, man. You know, these devils can't mess with me. You know, he was just he, he was just talking, you know, his normal talk. Like they they confident talky talk. He was like, Ock, these devils can't man mess with me. You know, y'all but y'all got me, man. This is what we do. And I was like, man, calm, man. Ock, you right, you know. And it was a big faith booster, a big faith booster, man. Ock was just, just like he do his lessons and how he was in my dream, man. It just, it was a big faith booster, and I just knew we was going to make it, you know, from, from there on out. So I'm going to continue my dream on what happened. So Esau's going house to house periodically, you know, uh, checking people. And I guess it got to a point where I guess they got to the numbers or the situation they wanted. And I guess Esau was about to just go ahead and just lay out all Jake out where they knew they was at. So Ock showed up to the house. And I'm thinking he was going to deliver foods and goods like he had been doing. But he said, no, bring you and your family. We got to go. They about to make that move. We got to go. So I was like, okay, con. So we got in the van. And Ock, you know, he led us to, uh, we, we was off in the sticks, man. It was like we went off in the wilderness, man. So I, we got out the van, and uh, we walking in the woods. And as we walking in the woods, you know, we stop, and Ock lifts up this latch. It's like a latch that was covered with dirt, sticks. Like, you would even know that there was a door. But Ock knew it was a door right there. So he moved the sticks and the dirt off her. He put up a latch, and he said, all right, 
Y'all going here, Ock. Y'all going here, Ock. And so me and my family were down in there. And uh, so we down. It's like an underground passage, man. We walk, we go down. It's like a ladder. We climb down the ladder. And then we walk in some tunnels. And Ock is leading us down some tunnels. And I remember as we walked through the tunnels, it got to this big open area, man. And the open area, it was like a, a, a underground, like a facility or something. And like... What I noticed what was in there was all the Akim in there. All the Akim, the Aqua, the whole nation was in there, man. I'm talking about down there, barbecuing it. And I know it's all the hopefully let. Because you get in there, all you're hearing is Yahab Bashi, I was shy. Uh, I come in there, you know, Akim is shallow warming me, you know. So it was like, oh, these are all brothers, you know, in the truth. Sisters in the truth. Like, and it was like a lot of us down there. Like, I couldn't even count how many. It was like a big underground facility. Um, everybody had their little, you know, it was like we was in like a little huts. The TPs and everybody was like, you know, um, all the Aki was like handing out water. You know, everybody's taking care of each other. Like Aki was down there, Aki was down there barbecuing. So we was all down there and it was like a, a sanctuary, like like an underground railroad or something, man. I remember being down there and I, I felt even better. because I was like, I'm surrounded by the nation now. Now I'm down here with nothing but hopefully let, you know, men and women. Um, there was children there, you know, for my children to play with. And it was like all of us was we were safe. In, in like a little sanctuary. I'm gonna go get this preset right here. Go get Psalms. And it was just, it was great. And I remember going to that, that area and I'm like, okay, you know, and I guess that's when Esau was gonna try to, you know, ride down on us. And I came through, it was like, man, you, you gotta get in the van, we gotta go. And we had to leave the house and we went somewhere to an underground facility, man. And it was like all the Akim, Aqua, the whole nation was there. Uh, um, you know, uh, singing songs. All you was hearing was your high bashi, I was shy. Prayers going up constantly. And it, it was great, man. When I went in there, I just felt good because I was surrounded by nothing but hopefully lake. And, and it felt real good, y'all, Sharala. So check it out. This is Psalms 63 and 2. And it says, To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. And that's a, a, what I could picture it, man. It was like a sanctuary for the hopefully lack. You know, and like like I said, like the scripture that said, see thy power, man. I was like when I got in there, I felt it was like all the little pressure being Babylon Great just uplifted off of me, man. To be surrounded by that many Akim and Aqua, the whole nation, to be submerged in the whole nation, it was like a whole it was like a whole feeling just like it just like the birds just lifted up off of me. And I felt good. I was like, look where I'm at, man. There's nothing but hopefully Lex. I'm hearing nothing but Yahabashah's name. Been heard, um, Shalom. It was just man, it, it was great, y'all. Shalom, I mean, great. That's the best way I can describe it. And uh, I'm bring this out too because that's all I was hearing was in there. Was man, like you can hear your how about Shah Shah's name? Just that's all you heard prayers going up, and you know, call how long you how about Shah was shy, and that's all I heard, man, in there. And I was like, you know, it wasn't like the chariots, so I wouldn't say like, like we made it because I woke up. A little bit at that part and i was like damn you know because i didn't want to wake up I, I was loving that part i just remember this walking in there and it, the best way i can describe it is like like the matrix the, the second matrix movie like zion when they was underground and then you see them all gathered up and morpheus played by Lawrence fishburne was talking to them it looked like that best way i can give you a vision to describe it anybody that's seen that movie that's what it looked like and um, i'm gonna bring out psalms 134 and 2 and it says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. And that's what was going on in that sanctuary, man. All I was hearing was, call how long you have, Bashi, I was shy, Bashi, and Rakadash. I heard a bunch of Shalom Woman. I was hearing a bunch of prayers. You know, it was a bunch of laughter. You know, our people, we were doing good. It's like we, we was in a real good place, man. These are Shalom Woman brothers, was greeting brothers. Uh, we were seeing brothers that we had seen, you know, on the YouTube. We finally were seeing them, like, you know, in, in real life. And we was all gathered around. The children was playing with each other. They was good. The women was, uh, you know, talking about each other. They was good. And it was just, it was like a little sanctuary for the nation. And it was just something like, it, it was, man, that, that feeling was so good, Yashua. That was a very good dream. And I just want to put that out there because in the dream, man, it's like, I, I, I made it through Jacob's trouble, man. Me and my family, man. We Like, did no harm come to us. We had some scares. Like I told you, the, the Mexicans tried to, uh, you know, another try to try to come up in there and, and take our goods. Uh, Esau had us land on the on the floor. You know, they's running through the house. Uh, they took the food that we had visible. You know, but we got stuff stashed, so I just pulled that out. And um, 
I bought a lot of off-grid things so that we could shower. Um, things that we can like still, you know, go to the restroom and use because that's all I do. And I advise you to do that too, y'all travel. Our last little bit of uh, Federal Reserve notes, our money we're getting, get off-grid stuff. Get stuff you can use when the power go out. Get stuff you can use when the water go out. Think like that. And that's the type of stuff because that's the type of stuff I get. So when it ain't hit, you know, I just putting that stuff into use and, you know, we, we were making. I got like, I bought a bang of candles. So I had all kind of candles and lights and we, we made it through. You know, uh, through the power of your high bashi awasha, we made it through, man. Because Esau could have laid us out. He didn't. Um, I'm not a good, like I said, I'm not a good shot with Esau's swords. But I was in my dream and we made it through that. Um, you know, my family, we, we made it through, man. I was coming through. Like I said, that's how that, that part right there really uplifted and made my faith this real concrete when Ox showed up and he had a working vehicle. I don't know how he got a working vehicle. He had food and supplies. It's like he was like a, a, a Santa Claus or something, man. He'll pop up every week and he would deliver off goods that we needed, you know? And, you know, that, that had to be the Lord that was helping Ox out. Like I said, he in a YMCA van and they can't catch him in Humvees. And he, he was laughing like it was nothing to him, man. It's like he was having fun playing with Esau. In the dream. And I'm like, shit, you know, see how Ock doing them? Shit, we ain't got nothing to worry about. So it boosted my faith. <laughs> I'm like, I got her giving Esau hell. So what I got to be worried about. So, and then, like, I would, I would always like to calm my family down. I would read the scriptures. You know, they was all, they wanted to listen in. <laughs> you know, it's hard to get your family to listen now, especially you got little ones. But I noticed then, like, when I read the scriptures, they was all hers. <laughs> they was listening. I would just read scriptures, like, every night. To keep them calm, you know, because we was hearing gunshots, you hear people hollering at night. It was all hell broke loose. Like, you you heard through the daytime, too, but at night, you really heard it. It got real bad at night, you know, and uh, it was it was Jacob's trouble, Yashrallah. And that was just a dream I had, man. They had shut everything down, and they, they wanted the people to kill each other in the dream. I noticed that was Esau's tactic. He shut everything down, and he wanted to, I don't know who shot the ICB off. The EMP missile, I don't know if there was another country. I don't know if Babylon did it. But I remember that was the last time the TVs worked and the cars worked. It was like when that missile went off and it made that big cloud, that big silver cloud in the sky, everything shut off. Everything fried, you know. And the only person I noticed that had to work a vehicle was Ah. He was the only one I know that had to work a vehicle other than the military. The military had, you know, Humvees. They had they, they vehicles. Their stuff was still working. And, and the only person I know was, was the military. And I was the only ones working cars. And like I said, uh, my Ock was riding through, providing us with, with food, water, medicine, you know, uh, candles, anything we needed. He was, he was, you know, delivering. He was like, man, you, you need something, you know, I'm gonna make a drop. I'll be back and I'll have it, you know, and next week he'd be back. So he was doing like, you know, weekly drops on us. That's why I was like, man, we good. And then at one point, you know, I thought, I thought he was doing a drop and he was like, nah, y'all gotta come. He saw about to, he at that point, he about to, you know, he about to make his move. Y'all got to come with me, you know, so, you know, you'll be all right. And we went tonight, it was like an underground railroad, an underground sanctuary. And it was a lot of Akim and Akwa in the whole nation that, you know, that I could see. It was a lot of us down there. We was good. Man, and we was in there, it was like, you know, a bunch of, everybody was singing, praying, you know, sending up prayers. All you heard was Yahweh Shashah's name all day long within that sanctuary. All day long, you just hear a car hello, you how about you? I was shy, and it was just man, it was some good sleeps in there, you know. And then I woke up, I didn't get to see, you know, I wanted to see more, man. I was kind of mad I woke up, I was like, ah, I thought it was real, you know. So, with that, I hope this has been edifying. I hope it was a faith booster to the nation, hey, because hey, in that dream, hey, we, we was good, yeah. But I got the hopefully legs back, man. Right? Nothing gonna, you know, happen to us real bad like that. At least not in my dream, you know, me and my family was good. So I hope this, you know, is a good faith boost to all the Akim that's doing the work, the Akwa that's listening to us doing the work and being a helping hand. And that's just my take on my dream that I had of Jacob's Trouble. It was definitely Jacob's Trouble. I seen a lot of people dying in my neighborhood. I didn't get to get too far out of my dream because I didn't leave the neighborhood. I kind of stayed close to the house, but I seen a lot of death. I had to put people to death in the dream. And and I, I could hear you could hear death when you sleep at night because the TVs was out. I guess everything was out, so you could hear what was going on outside your house very vividly. And it was a whole lot of hollering, gunshots, and just 
a whole bunch of chaos. So with that, man, I hope this has been edifying. I want to say Kwame Yashirala, Detail Bubba Bob, and Shalom.